I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today I'm going to show you the All Carbon RC Coyote. Now that is the quadcopter frame that I'm holding here, uh, but it's also available not just as a frame, but as a uh, pre-built kit. Technically it's a plug and fly kit, PNF. That means that the copter comes completely built with the receiver installed and you bind the receiver to your transmitter. So it doesn't come with a transmitter like a full ready to fly would. Now you've been seeing a lot of ready to fly, almost ready to fly kit uh, racing copters on my channel in the last few weeks. This one struck my interest because it's an example of a thing called the stretched X motor layout, stretched stretched X arm layout. Uh, and before I get into talking about this copter and, and making All Carbon RC very happy that I'm um, uh, sort of plugging their product, uh, let me talk to you guys a little bit about what that is and what the advantages that might be. If you think about the evolution of quadcopter frames over the years, and specifically, let's talk about mini quad frames. Uh, the first mini quad frame, I would say, was the Blackout H, uh, and it had a sort of a rectangular motor layout. And we could also think about the weight distribution of the, of the body of the copter as well. It was relatively spread out. So we had a, the, the, it was longer than it was wide, and had a relatively spread out weight distribution uh, for the body. And then over time, they got smaller. They went from, a, say, a 250 size to maybe a 210 to even a 190 size copter. Uh, and then we started seeing things like the Pure X copters, like, for example, the Krieger and the Shrike are two of the ones that I, the very first ones that I remember seeing. Uh, and the Pure X was different in that it centralized the weight of the body. So no longer was the body stretched along the pitch axis, but it was centralized. It was actually taller than it was wider or narrower. And the other thing it did is the motors became or square. They became square layout. And that creates a very neutral handling. If you think about it, something that is longer, think about um, some weight on the end of a pole. Well, the longer the pole is, the harder it is to get moving. And the, the physics formula there is that uh, torque equals force times the length of the lever arm. So the longer the lever arm, the more torque you've got. And that works both ways. You can imagine uh, using a tire iron to put the lug nuts on a wheel. And of course, the leverage of that tire iron helps you put a lot of torque on the nuts. But it works the other way. If you're creating a torque, right, the more, uh, the longer that moment arm is, the, the harder it is to get the thing moving. And that's why uh, when, you, when you think about the older blackout style H copters, they, they rolled a lot easier than they pitched because the weight was more centralized and the motors were narrower along the roll axis. And, and we see that here, we see that here. We've got the same layout here. Have we gone backwards? Have we regressed? Surely not. What's happened here is that racers have looked at the very neutral handling of the Pure X style copters, like the Krieger, the Mitsuko, the, the Flypro Jaguar, or the Shuriken X1 that I should have meant too many to name. And they've said, wait, we maybe don't quite want as much agility on the pitch axis as on the roll axis. Now, if you think about what a racing quad is doing, quite a lot of the time, it is angled forward at a relatively constant angle and it's flying like that. And you pitch forward a little and you pitch back a little to adjust your speed. But in general, a racing quad should be going more or less flat out at more or less a fixed pitch angle with small micro adjustments. The exception, of course, would be if you had a track that had something like a split S where you had to do a, a 180 roll and come back the other direction. Of course, you'd be doing heavier pitch moves there. And of course, you're always doing pitch moves when you're, when you're turning or making generalizations here. Whereas on the roll axis, a racing quad is commonly just going meow, 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 going crazy, right, on the roll axis. So the idea here is that a racing copter may do better to not quite have so much flexibility or agility on the limberness, if you will, on the pitch axis. We may want to sort of lock down the pitch axis a little bit. And that's especially true when you're working at very, very high up tilts, 45, 50, even 60 degrees up tilt. I have a video where I talk about the fact that when you're at very high up tilts, very small changes in pitch angle make very big changes in your vertical component of thrust. 
And you can go watch that video. I won't dive into that right now. Suffice it to say, though, at, you, the pitch axis becomes very sensitive at high up tilts. And if you've ever tried going to high up tilt, and as you go into a turn, suddenly, yeah, the copter's falling out of the sky, and you don't know why, that may be why. So the pitch axis is very sensitive, and racers are often cruising at a relatively fixed pitch angle. So... Maybe it's best for racing if instead of having the motors all toward near the center and the copter being super neutral, maybe we want it less neutral. Maybe we want it stiffer on the pitch axis. And that's the idea behind the stretched X frame. Now, I can tell you that in terms of physics, all of that makes sense. But I can't tell you how this copter handles in the air. And the main reason for that is that it's winter and there hasn't been a lot of great flying weather. I only just finished this build uh, going into Christmas. And so it may be a little while before you see me fly this and you get my opinion of how that holds up. But I just, it's hard to tell the difference between just a fad in this industry because, you know, new things sell, right? And, and what actually is being used by racers in the field to win races and go fast. But it, the things that are being described here do make sense. It'll be interesting to see how they hold up in the air. If we talk just about the frame design for a minute and not the kit, this frame is very similar to the Armitan Armadillo. Oh, look, here it is. What a coincidence. They both have vertical side plates and then a horizontal top plate. Uh, and you may recall, and apologies to Armitan, I know that this is their baby, but uh, I was pretty annoyed with this build. The main thing that annoyed me about the build was sort of having to bust the whole thing apart. There's this plate, there's this plate, then the side plates come off. The whole thing doesn't really stay together. If you, so if you have to get into the middle to work on it, uh, it's kind of like the whole thing just sort of falls apart and is a little hard to deal with. Now that is not as true for the All Carbon RC Coyote. And the reason for that is that the top plates, uh, the top sort of frame here, the side plates, the top plate, and the other side plate, they uh, stay together. They stay together. So we've got these screws here, and I would ca call those a, it's not really a captive nut, but we've got these screws coming in from the side with this nut here. And so if you take the screws out of the bottom and lift the top off, the top stays in one piece. So gosh, that's nice. You know, that's not having to, and it's only three plates, one, two, three. So there's fewer things. There's not a separate weirdo uh, camera bracket and so forth. The camera just fits into these holes on the side and it's relatively easy to get it. You can kind of just work it in sideways and slide it and it pops into place. So, so that's good. This is a little more maintainable, I think, than the Armadillo, which was a similar style of frame, which is why I compare it there. As far as the cable routing, the cable routing, uh, well, if you watch my build video, you'll see I had a few problems here because th this cutout here is so snug to the edge of the boards you can see here that the boards actually extend out the side wall a little bit, uh, and there's not much room. Again, you can see like right here how much room there is. There's not much room for these to come out. In fact, the way that this is shown being built on the All Carbon RC site is to actually bring the ESC wires out the underside and out the side and around. I didn't do it that way because I wasn't paying attention. Uh, I had to actually lower this stack. I had the stack higher, I had standoffs under the ROSD here, and the whole stack was too high and I couldn't get these wires out without them snagging and getting cut on the carbon, so I had to lower the stack. It was a bit of a hassle uh, to get it done, but now that it's done, it's not too bad, and I will say it's a little more flexibility than the Armadillo had, which really did not give me much, it was basically only one way to do that one with the wires, and here there's maybe two or three ways, <laughs> not a lot, but a few. They've done something interesting with this frame, and that is that they've elected not to use traditional aluminum standoffs. And the whole frame is held together with this sort of, well, they're not really captive, they're not retained nuts, but these sort of nuts and screws coming in and then in, the, in a little slot, and it holds it all together. And, and that creates this sort of, uh, sort of a closed box design that is claimed to be uh, more uh, stronger and more resistant to crashing, protects the stuff on the inside better than aluminum standoffs. We've all had the situation, I'm sure, where uh, the, the screw bent or the standoff bent, and that meant that our plates moved where they weren't supposed to be and maybe something got damaged. Uh, only crash testing will tell how well this stands up, 
but in principle that is correct. Uh, the reality is that whether this is stronger or not depends a lot on the design and the quality of the carbon, and that's not something I feel really confident uh, commenting on right here, but that's the marketing claim that's made, and maybe it's even true. So for example, if we were to compare that again to the armadillo, the armadillo has a very similar design, but the strength comes from these standoffs. And if these standoffs strip, or if the screw bends, then the whole thing can rack or, or move, right? Compared to the coyote, where the whole thing is held together just by the screws. And there's a lot less room, these are steel screws presumably, there's a lot less room for anything like that to happen. Getting on to the rest of the build, We've got, um, I put an RR OSD on this. Uh, the kit that was sent to me didn't come with an OSD. It's sort of a pure racer that just relies on telemetry for voltage monitoring. It is available from All Carbon RC with a TBS FP Vision board, which would be the video transmitter and the OSD. Um, Spect that way it comes in around $420. Uh, it's got TBS, Team Black Sheep, um, bulletproof 25 amp ESCs. I have got T Motor F40s on here. I believe they have switched and are using the uh, Cobra Champion motors now uh, if you order it from the site. And of course, TBS Triumph antenna. And this is a TBS Unify video transmitter. So very, very high end gear here. Uh, although, if you compare it to the, some of the other copters you've seen on my channel, you know, there's other copters coming in. Uh, in the price range of, say, 270 to $350. This is one of the most expensive. This is the only one that I've had that's more expensive is the QQ190 RTF, which comes in around $500. Also, interestingly, specced with TBS stuff. Uh, so there you go. Um, so 420 for this gear is, if it's all assembled, soldered up and all, I mean, that's a pretty reasonable price. Uh, it's just a question of whether that's in your pr specific price range. Uh, but I think it's a fair price for what you're getting. Since I know you're asking, let's weigh it. This is uh, all up, but no battery, 341 grams. So you're gonna come in around 440 or just about 500 grams with a typical racing battery weighing about 160 grams. And I think 500 grams with the battery, that's pretty respectable. Okay, so this is the All Carbon RC Coyote. It is available as a frame for about 60 bucks or a completely assembled kit ready for you to bind to your transmitter for depending on which options you pick as much as about 420 bucks may have 430 bucks maybe a little closer to 400 bucks again depending on the options uh i'm gonna have a build video coming up in just a couple days so you can really see how it goes together and of course all my usual build tips and so forth and then when the weather <laughs> and time allows don't hold your breath uh we'll see some flight video from it tuning and all that normal stuff but for now that's gonna be all thanks for watching and as always, happy flying.